why don't you start talking about the the obelisk removal shenanigans? Um, or actually, it wasn't the removal. It's like city council and Santa Fe wanted to they wanted to put it back up. <laughs> they wanted to put it back up. It is so bizarre. Um, like I can't even talk about the obelisk without just shaking my head because it's the whole thing is so bizarre. So we have discussed this before on Red Power Hour, and. Um, the the obelisk and the center of the plaza in downtown Santa Fe, um, otherwise known as Ocapoge, was um, supposedly a, a memorial to veterans of the Civil War. Um, but we also know that um, those same individuals who fought in the Civil War then turned their attention to um, both Diné homelands and... and um, other other native homelands and really that was the precursor to the trail of tears kit carson and his scorched earth policy and so these men that are supposedly honored by this obelisk were not were not heroes to us there was also an inscription that referred to the savages savage indians in the territory of new mexico and you know i grew up with this obelisk uh, my father used to joke we'd go downtown occasionally he used to joke that you know, those are your ancestors, and he would point to the word savage, and then he would kind of he would kind of laugh. But it wasn't like a laugh laugh. It was more like like you can't believe that that word is is on there. And then when I was younger, you know, it it someone came and actually chipped off that word, and everybody agreed that it was good that it was gone, but it was still there. Like the word was still there. You just couldn't see it as clearly. And a lot of people, a lot of indigenous people in northern New Mexico have been fighting to get that obelisk removed for years and years, including um, the all back in the day when it was the All Indian Pueblo Council. Um, they asked for it to be removed in, I think, 1973. It was not removed. Um, and so there got a few years back, um, there was a more concerted effort to have it rem removed during um, the summer of 2020. And um, a lot of statues were coming down all across New Mexico. And the Red Nation came up to Ogapoge and I spoke, I was on the stage with the mayor, his chef, and um, a lot of other native people, a lot of indigenous women. And um, the mayor actually promised to take the obelisk down. And that was, so that was June of 2020 and skip ahead to October and it was still up and he was refusing to answer any emails, any calls. So a group of folks, um, took it down for him. And that was on indigenous people's day in 2020. Uh, ever since then, there's been just fights and, um, dialogues and stupid conversations about what to do with it. And it started with um, the governor allocating a quarter of a million dollars to an organization called CHART, Culture, History, Art, Reconciliation, and Truth. And they liked that acronym, CHART, but really you can't have reconciliation without truth. And so the whole thing was doomed to begin with because they transposed those letters. They also hired an organization run run by a woman named Valerie Martinez um, to to run this chart project. And the very first thing she did is come out and inform the public that she was indigenous, that she was native. And she said she was um, Diné and San Ildefonso. She had done, she, well, she, I don't like, Diné and San Ildefonso. I don't know how you can pinpoint your DNA so closely to say you're from San Ildefonso because like us Pueblos have intermarried for generations and like how would you be able to say uh, yeah my my DNA says I'm from San Ildefonso really? DNA. Wait, is that yeah. how she was? Is that what she was using to identify oh, as yeah. indigenous? Oh. She wasn't like from San San I. Oh no, 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 okay. no, no. I went to school with her younger siblings, and 
they never talked about being native. They were like Santa Feans, you know, just Hispanic. New Mexicans. New Mexicans. Yeah. And so she was called out on that um, really publicly. Um, and she rescinded it. But even to say it to begin with, to start a process where you're trying to talk about truth and reconciliation, to start that process with that statement, with that lie, is just appalling. Um, so quarter of a million dollars, a year and a half later, um, they've gathered all this information and decided that, um, well, 50% of the people wanted to put it back up and 50% of the people didn't. That's what a quarter of a million dollars buys you in, in New Mexico. It's like a really sophisticated survey. It was very sophisticated. So a group of city councilors, four of the Santa Fe city councilors put together this proposal to put the obelisk back up, but, and this is the best part. So they wanted to put it back up with the original pieces, but fused together with some kind of material to make it pretty. And that would highlight the divisions within our community, right? So they're going to put the obelisk together with like rainbow super glue um, <laughs> to make it pretty. <laughs> they're going to bedazzle it? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to bedazzle it. And then they're going to put big plaques discussing why it was taken down in the first place. And... And this is their proposal. This is the city council's proposal. And then Mayor Weber chimes in at the last minute with a, with a another add-on to this proposal. Let's put a water feature because <laughs> we're not in a historic drought. And water, you know, is a great thing to do in the desert. And anyway... <laughs> I was, I was I read this thing. I was literally speechless. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. They are not serious about this. And so there started to be some talk on social media. Come down. We're going to, um, you know, we're going to show up. We're going to voice our, our opposition to this. There was a gentleman from Powake Pueblo, um, Kurt, I think his name was Warner, who started a petition. Um, the Three Sisters, um, shout out to the Three Sisters. They they did a lot of um, social media posts encouraging people to come down. So I showed up with my daughter and um, just for support to sign the petition. And there was maybe 15, 20 people. The city council meeting was supposed to start at 5. Um, Justine um, from the Red Nation, our comrade from the Red Nation, showed up with signs and so I thought, okay, well, I guess, you know, we'll stay and see what happens. So we got into the back of the room and there was, first of all, when we showed up, I should say, parked up by the Kit Carson obelisk, which um, son of a bitch Mayor Weber also promised was going to come down, but it's not. It's covered in a huge box. And, and there was Homeland also Security. be bedazzled with a water feature. <laughs> That's also going to be bedazzled <laughs> with a water feature. <laughs> There's there's a whole line of cops, including Homeland Security. Wow. Probably wow. Six, or, six or eight cars in front of the building. Homeland like, Security guarding, was there? Homeland Security was there guarding the Kit Carson obelisk. The phallus dedicated to Kit Carson. Um, and when we walked into the, uh, to the uh, city council chambers, there was maybe eight to ten cops. At one point, I think it got up to about 16 that were in there. Um, so the city council is, you know, moving around. They're sharpening their pencils. I don't know what they're doing, but it was getting really um, boring. So we had the banner in the back of the room and we just started chanting, you're on native land, you're on native land. And <clears throat> Mayor Weber got really flustered and he's like, there will be decorum in this room. Um, so we just kind of, we still stood there for about another hour holding the banner. And then the banner said support, or um, it said 1680. Um, yeah, support resistance, um, not, uh, I don't remember what it said. See, I, my brain is not working that well either. Um, 
anyway, resistance and um, it was all about resistance in 1680 and it was a great banner. Yay, Justine for bringing it. Um, <laughs> then we... Uh, celebrate resistance, not conquest? Celebrate resistance, not conquest. That <laughs> was right. it. Thank you. Wow. Look it at was that. yellow. We, between two of us, we may have one brain. Um, <laughs> exactly. That's what this episode is going to be like. <laughs> so then we, we ultimately sat down because we realized it was going to be a long time because they had to go over um, all of this business. And if you've ever sat in a city council meeting ever, they are the most boring, stupid ass settler shit you can imagine. Like every single one of them gets to say happy birthday to their grand nieces and their, you know, great grandmother's anniversary of her passing. And I mean, so that goes on for like 45 minutes. Then they try to set the agenda so that all of these people that are starting to gather won't have to wait so long. But we ended up getting in line for public comment and they were doing a proposal to this biotech company to um, to buy this building in downtown Santa Fe so they could expand whatever settler shit they do in biotech companies and like create pharmaceuticals that none of us can afford because we don't have universal health care. Um, and at one point, one of the city councilors asked them if they would be doing internships for young people in Santa Fe. And the guy says, yeah, we want to, we have interns right now. We'd like to do more internships. We'd really like to have um, native, you know, we'd like to open this up to native American people because we think they want to stay here. What? <laughs> so it's like an unrelated, just like uh -huh. active racism. Like uh -huh. when you're there for this other, like egregious act of racism uh -huh. against native people. We think they want to stay here. <laughs> And Justine, she's standing right next to me, and she goes, what? <laughs> like in a really loud voice, and I just like, oh my god. And then, of course, the mayor, there will be silence. <laughs> um, so, and Justine has this, this great sign she's holding up that says, them Indians took down our genocide monument. And she actually... <laughs> puts it on the railing right by where we're standing to make public comment. And these two women are sitting there. I swear they were in their 60s. And they were looking at us and they were like giving us the stink eye. And and I started staring at them. I was just like, what? Like what? Um, it wasn't Indians that took down the obelisk. It was people from out of town. It wasn't Indians. It was outsiders. They came in on a bus and they turned to <laughs> Justine and I was right. like, there we go with the bus again. Like, why? Do I I've never seen this bus. Would someone please show me the Red Nation bus? Because they keep telling me we have a bus. And I'm like, oh, it's like the Partridge family bus. You know, it's this great bus, the school bus that's been painted in it. But I've never seen it. And Justine's like, yeah, I know. And so they kept looking at us and, and she and then Justine was like, what? What? Like, it wasn't Indians that took down the obelisk. It was white people. And Justine's like, fuck you. And then they got up and started walking over. And I was like, oh, boy, we're in trouble now. And so there was a guy behind Justine who tried to push her back. Boy, I tell you, you do not touch Justine. Well, you don't a man touch anybody. Without... There was a guy who was who was standing there who tried to put not... trash. Not push her. He was actually native. Not push her back, but like not let these women get to her. But she okay. just like, no. Okay, that's fuck, what you mean. Fuck you. And and I just I started laughing. I was like, you like you keep saying that it was white people. The fuck it was. <laughs> and and then another person that we know who was there, Ronnie, came up and said, tried to tell Justine that these were. These were her cousins, these women who got up into our face. Of course These are they my were. cousins. They're okay. They really are. And Justine's like, don't tell me how to organize on my own land. And anyway, she got, she got sort of kicked back. Then um, there was a guy there, an older man, Hispanic man, who had showed up at a lot of our Entrada protests. And he wore a sign around his neck that said... De Vargas protected your Kiva faith. And I remember him and I remember that sign because he came up and tried to get 
in our faces at the Entrada protest, the last one we had. And my husband, who's Dinette, was there, and he, like, usually doesn't say anything. He shows up if he thinks we need protection, but he doesn't usually say anything. And this guy got up into his face, and Delvin just turned around and said, You're a liar! <laughs> Aw, good Delvin! <laughs> but so this guy was there, and he's staring at us, like... Ugh. The two Hispanic women are behind us. This guy's in front of us. And so I just leaned over and I was looking at him like, what is it? You want a picture? Um, and he got up and he moved his chair and he started to come back at, to where we were standing. And I just, you know, I, I, he started saying something about we were savages and raiders and the Spanish protected us from raiders and I thought, oh, my God, here we go again. Um, and there's going to be yelling. And Justine just goes, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to get between her and this guy. I was like, no one's getting arrested today. No one's getting arrested today. Just back off. Back the fuck off. So we must have stood there in that line for about two hours before... Um, oh, and oh, the other guy who was there, um, the other lovely person, um, was Eli Bransford, who does a YouTube channel called In Defense of Santa Fe. Okay. And he has done... Oh, yes, this guy. He, he has done multiple episodes on the Red Nation and the Three Sisters. That's right. I think he's, he's called... He called me a domestic terrorist. I think he called you a domestic terrorist he called me um, he had, I, I wasn't even at these things <laughs> no he he called the i mean he he well he calls us out as as marxists and communists which like i don't know why he thinks that's an insult or whatever i mean he definitely like thinks that by calling us communists he's insulting us and i'm just like woo, yay finally someone gets our politics but um <laughs> But he has called out, no, Mel, he's called you out directly and me and Christina Castro on this stupid YouTube channel. And he was there. And so Justine asked Savannah to record when we went up to give our public comment and gave her this camera. And so when we were up towards the front of the line, Savannah starts recording and she's noticing that this Eli Bransford is recording too. So... She goes and stands right in front of him. And she says, um, she said, yeah, I stood right in front of him. So you got some really good footage of my butt. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Oh, Elena, this is making my week. Oh God. It was, it, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was, I got to tell you, it was a scene. So, we had gotten there at four o'clock. By the time we get to up to public comment, it's like eight, eight thirty. And um one of the the um women from Three Sisters was in front of us, um, Autumn Billy. And um so she was speaking. Um the first guy who spoke actually I don't know if he was white or Hispanic, but his name is Bob and Bob you know, talked about how the obelisk should not go back up. And, you know, how dare you talk about a water feature when we're in the drought? Um, and then there were a couple of other people. And then Autumn went and she's very soft spoken, but she talked about not feeling safe in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I understand her. I mean, I, I understand everything that she was saying and I feel it. I don't live alone. Um, so to me, it was really painful to hear her talk about this and how as a native woman in Santa Fe, she feels the violence and yeah. doesn't feel safe walking. And that, that hit yeah. me. Um, and then I asked Justine if she wanted to go um, before me because um, I knew she was getting, she was getting fired up <laughs> and she gets in front. Oh, and then the mayor it says that anyone who's giving public comment has to give their name and address. And what? Justine and I were like, what the fuck? Like, are I'm you, not going to give my ad. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. What a piece yep. of shit. Literally yep. giving ammunition to like fascists who dox people. Yep. What a piece um, of shit. 
This guy's a Democrat, it, by the way. Oh God! And he, yeah, he, he, he is a, yeah, he's a piece of work. So, Justine gets up there. There's the woman sitting next to her, taking the notes on her computer, and Justine introduces herself in Tewa, and and says what community she's from. And the woman says, "I need your name and address." And Justine says, "I just gave it to you." <laughs> She says, she says, you know, I can't believe I'm back up here for this same fucking shit. Can't you guys get it together? <laughs> and then she says, like, um, and I'm, I may be, be butchering what she said, but the best thing was she's like, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to get a big old bulldozer. You're going to bulldoze that fucking thing down and you're going to plant some grass or a tree or whatever it is you shit-ass liberals do. (laughs) (laughs) You shit-ass liberals! He might have said shit-ass white liberals. Anyway, at this point, I'm holding the sign up like this because I'm laughing. I'm in front of my face. (laughs) Why did I know about this? <laughs> this is gold. <sighs> yeah, so I had to stop laughing because they only they only were supposed to give us two minutes. Of course, the rich white guys from the biotech company got to blabber on for 45 minutes each about how much they love Santa Fe and how they're supporters of the opera and all those of us standing in line can think of you're the ones who are raising our property taxes and making it impossible for for us to to live in our in our hometown but just so they they tried to cut justine off and and uh um she just yeah she she just read them the riot act i was i was laughing so hard (laughs) then uh then it's my turn i got up there and and introduced myself um i I don't even remember what I said. I do remember that I was going to try to be like calm and talk about why that obelisk was so offensive, but Justine got me going. So I I started, I was like, you know, I was on stage with you, Mayor Weber. And I couldn't remember what, what day it was. I said, I was on stage with you. Um, in June, and I don't remember what year it was, and someone from the back goes, it was 2020, and I was like, I was on the stage with you in June of 2020, and you promised you were going to take that obelisk down, and the Kit Carson obelisk, and you know what, just like every other fucking government, every other fucking promise that this government has made, every treaty that's been signed that has been broken, you broke your promise to us, so you know what, we took it down. For you, and then I turned to the rest of the group, and I said, and "I said it. It wasn't white people who were bust in. The fuck it was. It was native people that took that thing down. And you know what? If it goes up again, it will come down again. Yes. <laughs> Just right and then in the mayor's plug. like, the mayor's like, you will address me, not the crowd. <laughs> and and then I said, I said, you know, um. I said, I grew up in this town, and and uh, this town makes its living off of tourism. And you know why people come to this town, tourists come to this town? It's because of the native people. It's not because of any of you people. But we have no say in what goes in our, on in our own town. And and I don't even know what I said at that point. But, but he kept telling me my time was up. And Savannah, who was standing, who had her butt in front of Eli Bransford's face, um, she goes, don't tell my mom to shut up. (laughs) (laughs) And then these women, these, the same two women who came after us while we were standing in line started, started saying something and, and they go, um, some, they said something, and Savannah's like, shut the fuck up. And then they were like, and then they turned to her and they go, God bless you. And she goes, fuck you and your God. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that the city council has ever seen the likes of the Red Nation women. But it was it was something. And then... 
Um, by that time, it was nine o'clock. Justine had a long way to drive, and uh, and we hadn't eaten any dinner. We were like getting ready to pass out, so we left, got home. Um, I started watching it on uh, on YouTube, and um, public comment ended at eleven o'clock. I mean, that's how long that damn meeting went. From 5 until 11 o'clock. And ultimately, um, they they adjourned that night without a decision. But it turns out a couple of days later, um, the, the city councilors who had pro- made this proposal rescinded it. So it is not on the table anymore. Um, so we actually, you know... We won that little skirmish, but it was, it was intense. And, you know, being attacked constantly is, is like something that you just never get used to, but it happens so frequently. So frequently. 